<laughs> How you doing, Anthony Ferraro here of Crate Sci-Fi. Today is part two of the Mandalorian helmet build. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. In part one, we took the Ruby's Django Fett two-piece and we went ahead and put that together and modified it, right? We glued it up. Uh, we did some Bondo on the seams. We did some initial battle damage. We primed it. We did uh, some toothpaste weathering, right? Because usually with these Mandalorian costumes, it's very heavy weathering. And then we did our final paint. Lots of layers and lots of weathering. <laughs> and I'm very, very happy with that. Oh, so cool. So much fun. So, right, we did lots of layers of paint, lots of treatments. We uh, beefed up the visor with some gel so that you can't see through it anymore. And then we did the interior, which I'm not sure if you could see in this light. And we really, really did a thorough job on the interior. A lot of fun. All right, so um, we're gonna go over this step by step. I even did some uh, stenciling on this, which is pretty cool. Just little things like that, right? You know, you're looking at this helmet, you're like, oh, it's cool, walks by, just that little, Right, little doodads like that. And then for the wearer, taking the time to do the interior really makes a difference. And it actually, because this is an inexpensive helmet, it stabilized it too. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the process. All right, so now we pick up where we left off. We're at our base primer right here. Remember, we have the toothpaste under there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just a light brushing with a metallic silver. Now, this is not a dry brush. A dry brush we'll do later. That's gonna pop some uh, sort of damaged highlights. This is just to give the whole thing uh, like a gunmetal finish. So I just lightly uh, brush the entire helmet. I just dip a little paint on there, wipe it off with the paper towel just to make sure that it's a, a dry brush I'm doing air quotes there <laughs> but it's a light brushing so you see there that's metallic it looks good catches the light interestingly and it helps to our really beat up appearance so I'm happy with that so now we're gonna do masking there's a lot of masking in this paint job so the first thing I'm gonna do is mask off the cheek area. I'm calling it the cheek area. I don't know if there's a proper name. Somebody can tell me in the, in the comments. So it's right under the T, there's this cheek. And I've noticed in a lot of the reference pictures that that tends to be a different color or different hue. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to cut a thin piece of tape so I can make that curve. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some rub and buff, which I talk a lot about and use a lot on this channel. And that's basically just a wax that has uh, metal in it. So when you rub it, usually with your finger, uh, it gives a really metallic uh, sheen. So what I'm gonna do is take some rub and buff, just a little bit, um, but with this, I mean, I actually go a little heavier than I usually do because um, I know that I'm gonna do several layers and this is gonna get stripped and I'm going to uh, distress it. So I just start applying with my finger and um, I can be pretty generous and, and pretty uh, aggressive with this because I have it masked off. And um, now I'm taking off the tape and you can see that now there's a difference, right? Especially when the light hits it. There's a nice subtle difference, but it's there and it, it really works. So now I'm going to mask off uh, the main face part that we're going to color. What you're not seeing off screen, which I should have showed you is, before I put the tape on, I put it on my t-shirt. And then that way it picks up lint and it just makes it less sticky. So now I'm uh, repurposing the packaging to help me make these stencils, which is a good idea, something to keep in mind. And now I have that cheek stencil and it's perfect because I did it off the packaging and I do the other side and now we're ready for color. I got this great uh, Soviet red. For the paint, for this, because I know it's going to be uh, just specific areas, I got an expensive paint. Uh, this is paint that air, uh, people that do graffiti use, and it's just a nice color. And again, you know, we're gonna really weather and distress this. So right now, it's pretty bright. But, you know, down the road, trust me, that's gonna all go away. All right, so now I have this stencil that I bought online, and that's the Mandalorian skull. And I just thought that would be a nice touch in the back. So now I'm going to do an actual dry brush. So what I do is just do a light brushing on the edges. And I think you can see it there when I go in close. And you're just kissing the edges. 
and it gives it that nice worn look. Again, it's subtle, but it, it's big, right? <laughs> All right, so now I have hot water and the sponges and we're gonna start to remove that toothpaste. Now, usually when I do this, it's just uh, a few little pieces, but because these helmets are always so heavily damaged, there's a lot on there. So I use a Scotch-Brite uh, where the sponge doesn't work and I really dig in there. Now, one thing that's happening now that I'm not aware of yet is uh, I'm removing all my light brush technique, which is fine because we're just gonna do it again and it's actually gonna help to tie things together. So now I'm just going through, getting rid of all the toothpaste, and, you know, I didn't put this all on camera, but I checked one, two, three, four times. You know, it's a process, step by step. And that looks really cool, right? But you'll notice all my uh, light brushing is gone, which is fine. So now, because I want to do this tonight, uh, uh, having an old hair dryer is just a great thing to have as part of your toolkit. So now I'm just, because I was just water, I hair dry that, and now I can do uh, the light brushing again. Now, I would still recommend doing this step because all these layers just add to the story. They just add to it. Maybe a little bit of that first uh, pass I did didn't get removed. And this, you know, this really takes, you know, less than five minutes. So now I'm just tying the whole thing together and then it helps to blend our heavy damage. And here you see I'm just just lightly dusting that. And now see how that red is toned down and it really has a life now. So now I'm gonna seal this all in with a clear coat because as we build our layers, we don't wanna muddy them, we wanna build. And now I'm gonna do a wash on the whole thing. Generally in my washes, I just do black acrylic and just a touch of brown. And I have uh, some water there, a lot of water. You really water this down and then I slop it on the whole helmet. I like to be messy with this because I feel, um, you know, you're gonna have to clean it off anyway. And by being sloppy, I get some happy accidents. Then you take a paper towel and you just start to wipe it off. Um, again, you know, you go back in, and this is what I call my bloody hand technique. <laughs> I've done this in a lot of my videos. So uh, the color temperature is weird here, but basically that's just a red and I put it in my hand and I'm gonna simulate you know, somebody was wounded and they're grabbing and touching their helmet. Now, 95, 97% of this we're going to uh, wipe off, okay? But there's gonna be little hints and little subtle hues of red that really just add to the whole story of this piece. And there it is all dry. And now I'm gonna add one more clear coat just to seal in what we sealed in. And next, uh, I'm gonna do the interior of the helmet. Um, this is for the wearer, and also in the case of this helmet, because it's an expensive helmet, it's a little flimsy, and by um, putting foam on the entire interior of this helmet, it's really gonna help to stabilize the helmet. So what I do is take the painter's tape and I roughly draw out my patterns. Then I uh, bring them to my cutting board and just clean up the edges, and this is gonna be the template um, for my pieces inside the helmet. And basically, I just go through all the places in the helmet where I'm gonna put foam. I'm gonna cover the whole entire thing and uh, rinse and repeat, and you just make a template. Now for this, uh, for the other side, you know, it's going to be the reverse of this piece, but uh, because it's just the interior, you just make sure you flip the other piece around. Now again, I'm gonna utilize um, my packaging. There's these cheek pieces that are, um, have this interesting curve. So I'm gonna make my template from there, and then now I'm going to trim it onto this. This is a thinner foam, because the cheek is very close to my face, but I still wanna have 100% coverage inside that helmet. So I cut out these um, little chin pieces. So now, I'm with a, this is not a dryer, this is a heat gun. I'm just um, sealing the foam, and what this does is it gets rid of the, the rough edges, and you can uh, blend it and, and mold it. So now with super glue, I'm just step by step putting each one of these pieces in. Um, just a little super glue, press it in, and this, you know, this goes very quick. And what I'm doing also is, is um, melding together the seams inside this helmet. And you see that big seam on the top, I'm gonna put a piece of foam that goes across that whole thing, as you see here, and now our helmet is really held together. And I'm gonna paint the whole entire inside with Plasti-Dip. That's a truck bed liner and it's good for foam. 
and it just gives it a nice durable finish on the inside. And it, it, it just, when you go to put it on, it just feels nice instead of having all this weird stuff in there. Now with these helmets, the visor is too transparent. So here I have some uh, red gel. This is just gel for lights. Um, and again, I'm gonna use my packaging to make a template. And you could use uh, any dark color. I'm using red because my helmet is red. Probably like a really, really dark green is gonna give you a, a nice effect. And now I'm just uh, transferring this template onto paper so that I can uh, cut it out. And now I'm just cutting it out. And off camera, I, I made two of these just because you never know. And um, I just wanted to have a backup, but the, I, everything worked with the first one. So now I have my, um, my dark red gel that we're just gonna lay in. Uh, so at first I was gonna do this on the outside, but then um, I realized it was better um, to attach this to the inside. So I made it a little larger and I put it on the inside and just put a, a couple dabs of super glue in the, in the corner points. And now that's great. You can't see through it. And here's the finished piece. Really a lot of fun to uh, weather something this heavily and it's actually the way it's supposed to be. And I, I say this a lot, you know, low cost, high impact, especially when you're making things on a budget, the weathering really helps to add value. All right, looking good. Ha, 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 ha.